Stealing Focus! Greetings, Broadway babies. I'm Emily. Hi, I'm Jeff. And welcome to the second episode of Stealing Focus Interviews. This is the show where Jeff and I talk to people from the world of theater, basically. Broadway, the West End, LA theater, and beyond. And today we're really lucky to have Broadway photographer Matthew Murphy joining us. Uh, He's taken many, many stills that you will recognize. Including a couple on our shirts. Heard of them? (laughs) Yeah! So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matthew Murphy! Yay! Hi, Matt! <laughs> Hi, guys. I love your shirts. Yes! Thank you. We're we- going to we're gonna talk about them. They were done by a really uh, good photographer. Have, have you heard of this show? It's, it's on my radar. I feel like yeah. I'm going to see it at you some know, point. I, yeah. I have to start off with um, Jeff and I were lucky to go to a screening of Mary Poppins Returns, I guess, last year, a couple years ago. Yeah. And, um, we met Lynn Manuel, and you were my in. I was oh, like, yeah, "Oh, yeah. I know Matt Murphy." He's like, "Wait a second, you know Matt Murphy? He took my headshots." Yeah. So oh, that was yeah. when he was like, "Okay, cool. I'll take a sneaky selfie with you guys." And he also took this picture. Yeah, that this one. one. Oh my God, he's what a what a journey! What a journey <laughs> to being like one of the big Broadway photographers. Um, so uh, Matt, I want to ask you first how you got into photography because yeah. I know it wasn't like a straight line. Yeah. So, you know, I. I basically came to New York when I was 17 and I was a professional ballet dancer when I first came there. So I was dancing with American Ballet Theater. I'd come straight from North Carolina School of the Arts and had kind of joined ABT, was doing that for a while, kind of traveling, performing all over, loving that. I and trained ABT in that is since... no like slouch. Like that's a really, really big ballet. Exactly. If, pe- if people have seen Center Stage, it's kind of like, you know, the, the, I was in the school that feeds into the main company and I was trying to be, you know, Charlie from Center Stage was kind oh. of the vibe that, that I was going for. Is motorcycle? No, it's, that, it's No, the, that's it's Cooper. The, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, well, but both of them were actually in AVT. So those are the, t- the, you know, those are the dancers that were in the company that I was in. And I was doing that for a while, was loving it. And basically, like, not to get kind of sad and dramatic right off the get-go, get it, get but uh, basically I had this health crisis where I came down with basically what is chronic mono. And so I had chronic mono when I was 21. And that was basically a year and a half of, like, dealing with this health crisis and going kind of, what am I going to do? I need something to to take my time, you know, because I want to be creative, but I have no energy. So I just ordered a camera off of Amazon and was like, I like taking photos. I had taken photos for a blog that I had while I was in ABT. And I was like, I'm just going to see where this goes and kind of just started to like, slowly figure out what the heck I was doing. That's you know? awesome. That's fascinating. <laughs> just ordered a camera, then end up like one of the great photographers that we have. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, uh, I wanted to ask you about North Carolina School of the Arts. I didn't realize yeah. that you went there. Did you go there just for college or were you in the high school program too? So I was in the high school program there. I went there when I was 13 and was in the ballet program. And so for the ballet program, they have both uh, high school and college for acting they only have I think senior year of high school and up Mm -hmm. and so I was there from when I was 13 till I was 17 and then moved to the city right away which now that I look back on it I'm like like how did I survive moving to the city when I was 17 (laughs) I don't know what like I don't know what I was doing we used to be able to do things like that and I don't think I could anymore yeah Yeah. the things that like the stories that I could tell of the things we got into when I was 17 I'm like oh I don't I don't know (laughs) I don't know (laughs) about Well, None of us need to share our 17. No, no, exactly. Um, so I want to know, how, what was, how did you get into specifically shooting uh, theater and Broadway shows? Yeah. And I know you take, you take amazing photos of Broadway dancers, and I mm-hmm. imagine it's because you have an eye for it because you used to do it. But how did you get that foot in the door? So, you know, the thing that I always tell people is it really was just about me, like, being in the right place at the right time and kind of putting myself out there and asking for an opportunity because the first real big break that I got was I was at a performance at city center and I was there with a friend of mine who was an ABT dancer and we were in the back row of the audience and this New York times photographer was standing behind us and she recognized this dancer and started talking with him. 
And I had been photographing a little bit at that point. I'd been maybe shooting for two or three years then. And I basically was like, light bulb moment, Matt, this is a time to like put yourself out there and tell this person what you do and see if for some reason it leads somewhere. And I basically said, you know, my name's Matt Murphy. I'm a dance photographer. And, you know, if you ever need somebody like this, again, this is something that when you only do when you're like 22. I was like, if you ever need someone to shoot yeah. for the times, like I'd love <laughs> yeah. to. And she was so nice. Uh, her name's and Andrea Moen and she's the dance, the staff dance photographer there. And she was like, you know what? Send me your portfolio and I'll see what I can do. So I sent her my portfolio. She was like, this looks great. Let's have you come in and meet with one of the editors. And so I walked in as, you know, a 22, 23 year old and met with one of these editors in the New York Times building. And I look back at some of the stuff that I presented initially, and it's just the kind of like ballsy stuff that you can't really do yeah. once you know all the rules. I was just yeah. kind of like, I'm just gonna see, you know, how this goes. And they gave me a, a freelance contract there after that meeting. And so I, I started shooting for the Times at that point. And that really got my foot in the door with shooting both music and theater a little bit more than dance. And from there, it was an, another kind of year or so of just like right place, right time. And at that point, I actually met my husband, Ryan, who is how we all know each other. Yeah. And he was like, he was su such a proponent of me kind of putting myself out there and and really kind of like encouraging me to embrace this new career that I was going, you know, down the path of. And we actually were in, in California where you guys are. And we were there one summer and I had photographed Broadway bears a couple times. Oh, cool. And yeah. so Jerry Mitchell is obviously, you know, we all know who Jerry Mitchell is. He runs Broadway bears, created it, all of this. And I had met him briefly a couple of times and I, remember being in LA at Ryan's family's house and we were there for the summer and you guys were teaching mm -hmm. and I saw that Jerry was in Hollywood at the Hollywood Bowl doing hairspray yeah. and so I just had this another kind of light bulb moment of going I'm gonna put myself out there and just see what happens <laughs> so I emailed him I like searched through my email and somehow saw that like he would cc'd on some group email that I never should have had access to Bravo. and so I just <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna email Jerry Mitchell. And so I emailed Jerry and was like, I'm in town. I don't know if you remember me. I'd photographed Broadway Bears a couple times. You know, I said, I'm in Pasadena and I'd love to just come and shoot Hairspray for free if, if you're down. Thinking like I would never hear back from him. He emailed back within like three hours and was like, full out, come to the stage door tomorrow. And like, you know, we'll have you shoot the dress rehearsal. <laughs> and so I, so I literally like, Show up at the Hollywood Bowl, Ryan's parents, I, you know, I never have had a driver's license. So Ryan's parents drive me to the Hollywood Bowl. We literally like almost don't make it. Traffic is terrible. It's all these moments of like, we should have turned back. It stress. It didn't make any sense. Yes. I was doing, you know, epic. the stress, I was doing it for yeah. free. It was kind of one of those moments where I was like, maybe we should just not go and we'll, you know, I'll figure it out. But I showed up, Jerry like welcomed me in. And he was just like, you know, empty Hollywood Bowl, like, go at it, have fun. Like, we're going to start running the show in about an hour. So I shot the show and, you know, was losing my mind because it was like this all-star cast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was incredible. And I emailed him the photos afterward and he said, you know, these are so great. I want to try and get you on my next show. And at that point I was like, wait, what? Like how? <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen you know first of all I don't think that's gonna happen and also who says that <laughs> and so I thought that was like peak of my career at that point like nothing could ever get better than hearing something like that from Jerry Mitchell and he literally like a year later emails me and says hey I don't know if you remember but I'm trying to get you on the show it's called kinky boots and I need to send my I need to send your portfolio to the producers and get all these people to kind of sign off on you joining and that was like this door that opened for me that never should have opened that like <laughs> never could have you know shouldn't like that just shouldn't yeah. have happened honestly it was amazing i'm and so then it was like lucky. snowballs yeah. cuz then yeah. i would just be like out at the theater at, you know at like some national tour and looking at a playbill and it would be like photo by matthew murphy yeah. or like my mom would open you know yeah. the la times and she would always be like Matt's picture she'd be flipping out oh. like, it happened so quickly <laughs> and what a great first show kinky boots is an awesome show well and that's what is so nuts about the kind of just lucky nature of all of this is that my first show easily could have been something that came and went right. yeah. and you know would have still been an incredible opportunity but the fact that it became kinky boots and became this kind of worldwide 
sensation and won the Tony and, you know, opened up doors for me that just never would have opened if it hadn't hit the way that it did. So it just kind of was this perfect storm of like someone giving me an opportunity and taking a chance on me and lots, you know, it took so many people. It took all the producers who gave me that first opportunity, the press reps, Jerry, like everyone just kind of saying, we know that Matt has never done this and we're okay with that. And we're going to give him a chance and we're going to, answer the questions for him as it comes along. I mean, I knew, I didn't know any, I didn't know what I was doing, honestly, you, you know, in so job. many ways. You learned on learned the job. Learned on the job, yeah. yeah. until you make it, baby. Well, exactly. What, what, exactly. What I love is uh, the reason, like you keep saying it never should have happened, but it happened because you were bombastic. You were a young kid who, who like, w you wouldn't, be held down by like your fears. You just went out and yeah. you went for it and you were rewarded It for can't that. hurt to ask, like it really- And that's like what I always tell people is like, it just, the literally the worst thing that could have happened is that he could have just not responded yeah. or said no. And you yeah. know, at that point, I'm in the same place that I would have been before. So, it, you know, the best thing you can do is just to put yourself out there and say, I'm ready for this opportunity. I would love to do this if you'll have me. And if they will, then, you know, do your best to to kind of just, nail it as as much as you can without you know being a crazy person <laughs> can, I, can i ask you a question about your process like let's say yeah like kinky boots obviously was your first but since then you've photographed hundreds of shows um do you have do you get to uh go to other shows before that like dress rehearsals before that or rehearsals before that to get a yeah. feel for the show before you shoot or, or a lot of times you just winging it it kind of depends it, it depends on a couple factors it depends on uh, my schedule in terms of like, if, if I actually am free the night that the dress rehearsals or the rehearsals are happening, no matter what, I always want to try and see at least part of the show before I get in. I would love to get a full run to view in the studio at least. Um, cause there's so many moments that if you don't know that they're happening, that the first time you're inevitably going to miss. So there's a couple parts to it where one, I definitely want to get in and see a rehearsal. I want to hopefully photograph a rehearsal just so I get some sort of rapport with the the actors in the company so that I'm not just this stranger in the dark, you know, when, when the, the show run actually happens. Right. And then, you know, I usually try and get in during tech and just take a peek at the lighting and see kind of the shape of the theater because there's so many factors that you don't take into account when you're an audience member that really weigh on a photograph, like how high the stage is or the angle of the spotlights or how, you know, like there's all these different factors that until you're in the space, you can't really predict. And so I'll definitely try and get in and do some test shots, you know, just for my own sanity, I think so that the night of the dress rehearsal, I'm not completely winging it. Jeff and I were really lucky because last time we went to New York, uh, we were able to see you work and not yes. three, times. three times because- That was crazy. I couldn't believe that, yeah. Oh, yeah. So so for all of you out there, what happened was um, in our last video, our last interview, we mentioned that we got to see the final dress rehearsal of Hades Town, And that was because of Liam Robinson, who's Jeff's cousin. That was what we were planning on that trip. And then that, uh, I don't know, a couple days before, like that morning, you called us up and we're like, hey, right. I'm shooting <laughs> both parts of Harry Potter and the Cursed yeah. Child today for the new cast you want to come no you're so yeah. sweet that you were like hey because we had tickets to another show right you were supposed like, to go hey. see something else yeah yeah you were like maybe if you can trade those tickets you and we're like both we're parts of cursed child no no we'll come we're, we're, yeah. can we be yeah. at the theater in 20 minutes yes we're in the village it we was can crazy. Pop on a train. and like that show it was crazy because those were two watching you work in two very different spaces because the yeah. Cursed Child, um, which, which theater Huge. is that again? Do you remember? Enormous. That's at the, um, the Lyric. The Lyric. Okay, so it yeah. was huge. I saw 42nd Street Huge theater. Back theater. In the yeah. We were in like back the when it was third Center. balcony. Yeah. Like it was insanely big. And they had, I don't think anyone was in the orchestra seating, right? It was completely empty. That's always kind of a battle that I have with the with, with stage management and the producers and everything, you know, during during the photo shoots because because I'm shooting as it's happening, I want to have as much flexibility for kind of running around the space to get the angles that I need. But at the same time, they want to have an audience as close to the actors as they can so that the energy feels like a real show. And so it's always this kind of negotiation of going, okay, I can have five rows or I can have 10 rows and I can have both aisles or one aisle or sometimes, you know, sometimes it really gets to the point where it's like you can have two rows and that's it. And just do your best and they figure put it their out. Foot down, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Well, then that's yeah. what it was like at Hades Town yeah. at the Walter Kerr because that's a very different space. Much smaller. Close, yeah. 
Yeah, much smaller. And there were people in the audience on the sides, and you were just in that middle yeah, area. Yeah, the middle area they gave to you, though. So, like, I, I was, yeah, I think I was it, watching you move around. It was, it was a really fun experience. Yeah, we me. couldn't really see you in Cursed Child because we were so high yeah. up, but of we course, could see yeah. you a lot during Hades Town. And that was really a cool experience. And then to be able to see those photos after the fact was crazy. Like, it's, yeah, crazy. it's, and, and Joan Marcus was there that day at Hades Town. Yeah. Like, Joan Marcus. My whole career legend, the one the yeah. person to shoot your show. Uh, I, I did, and now it's you two. I did You're a couple shows. Well, yeah, she's she's Forget still yeah. she's still in, so incredible and in shooting nonstop. You know, we and has been. I, I, Emily, we're so, so similar. Where it's like we grew up as these kind of theater nerds, and I, I know you were as well, Jeff. And so it's like we just became these like huge theater nerds that grew up watching Joan Marcus photos everywhere. Yeah. And so for me, when I all of a sudden was able to actually like call her a friend and have this interaction with her, I literally left, I, like, like this whole quarantine, I've been playing words with friends with her, which Aww. I'm like, if, if my like 10 year old self yeah. could see that I'm getting to play words with friends with Joan Marcus and get to like talk with her and have, you know, all of this like incredible mentorship and relationship with her, I wouldn't believe it. You know, she's incredible. I mean, you must have so many moments like that though too, because I was just looking at your website right before just to remind myself. And I was like, God, I forgot he shot this person or God, I forgot he shot this show. And it was just like, there must be so many moments where you're like fangirling out on the inside. It's always, it's always the moments for when it's people that we were fans of when we were younger too, yeah. especially like it's the people that we grew up idolizing where I always kind of have the real kind of freak out moments. People yeah. who are famous now, it's, easier for me with like actors that are famous now or newly famous to kind of sure. go like okay like I, I like can keep my cool a little bit but yeah, there's something yeah. about when you meet yeah when you meet someone that you grew up with like pictures on your wall of them it's just and, your your brain kind of melts and now the actors that weren't famous when you were a kid were like oh my god you're Matt Murphy oh this is great you're gonna shoot me this is you're famous Matthew Murphy that's it, it, that's very sweet. It's, no, it's always nutty to me when I when I when I show up to a show and people are like, "Oh, it's Matt." I'm like, "What's happening? This is crazy." They're like, we love your pictures. That must be cool. It's really yeah. Really cool. It's a it's a nice little like boost of confidence for sure when I'm about to shoot a show. It's always I'm always super flattered and still kind of can't believe because I just love doing it so much and I'm such a theater nerd that like for me the fact that anybody sees the photos is just such icing on the cake. Where I just feel like when I'm at a dress rehearsal. I'm so spoiled just getting to see the show yeah. and getting to work on a show and be, you know, witness to these creative team members where you're getting to see their process and like watching them direct, you know, watching Tommy Kale direct people during Hamilton. You're like, what is happening? This is nuts. <laughs> you know? Well, and, and so let's talk about Hamilton because that's the whole thing right now. Um, yeah. and these silhouettes are, I mean, they're everywhere. They're a huge part of the, the marketing for the show and they're in, I know they're everywhere. Um, <laughs> and, and they're, I love the ones that you have. I love seeing the pictures, uh, that aren't the silhouettes, the, that white room, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about that. So, you know, I was brought on to Hamilton when they were still at the public. So they were downtown and they knew that they were going to be transferring and they weren't sure when they were going to transfer. It was kind of this like, are we coming in this season? Are we coming in next season? We're not sure, but we want to be ready to go. And so we want to get all of our marketing materials as kind of primed as, and ready as possible. So they got in touch with me and it was all this kind of like sworn to secrecy. You know, it was called Project X and all my emails where like we weren't allowed to talk about what it was. We weren't allowed to say anything. And we had all these meetings where basically they had a really, really clear idea from the get-go. And it was, you know, Jeffrey Seller, who's the lead producer, who was the lead producer on Rent and, you know, all these shows that we grew up loving in the Heights, all of that. Yeah. And Drew Hodges, who is the art director and, and the founder of Spotco, which is the ad agency that has been so incredible to me and given me so much work, but also has created literally like every epic Broadway campaign for the past 20 years. Wow. Um, and so they brought me on board and we had all these meetings where it was basically like, we know that we want it to be this kind of like emblem for the show where it's not necessarily about it being like that specific actor, but it's about the, the energy of the show and the brand of the show. So we want this kind of like Mark, like the Les Mis, you know, the Les Mis uh, Mark or the Phantom Mask or any of those. We want it to be kind of worldwide recognizable as a brand. So they knew they wanted it to be photo assets. We had all these meetings about this, about the photo shoot. And we had discussed the idea that even though we knew they were going to be in silhouette, 
in the final product that we wanted to shoot them with like a little bit of wrap light, a little bit of, uh, of information kind of on the images so that if they ever wanted in the future to use them as photographs, they could. And so we went in that day, I think it was like maybe like middle of March while they were at, you know, at the public. And we had the entire cast in the studio at Chelsea Piers. And I still, that day is the kind of moment for me in my career where I remember saying to Ryan afterwards, like, if this is it, like, if this is all I do, and this is like the moment of my career that I remember, I am so happy. <laughs> like, I'm so okay with that. And I'm so proud of that. And yeah. the fact that I got to be creating alongside Jeffrey Seller and Drew Hodges, and then got to be witness to this moment of musical theater history, you know, I'll never, I'll never be able to repay them for giving me that opportunity, you know, just to to be able to say from my own heart that I got to do that is incredible. Um, yeah, and I just remember the whole day was, I mean, the whole day was kind of mind blowing. I didn't know, I didn't realize you shot that at Chelsea Piers. Yeah, so we were at, uh, at Pier 59 at Chelsea mm. Piers and we literally had like the whole cast kind of throughout the day, we had two different studios and they had, I think it was like, one studio was doing motion. So I don't know if you've seen the like the the uh, silhouette of Lynn like walking onto mm -hmm. the star where he kind yeah. of like has his arms down. He's doing yeah. that. So they were doing and that in one studio. It. Yeah. They were doing that in one studio and then we were doing stills in another and 10 minutes per person maybe. And we were just going, you know, as quick as humanly possible trying to get these images and we're seeing them all kind of come into the monitor. And I was so nervous because we had such a good rhythm going. We had gone through so many of the cast members, but we hadn't done Lynn at that point. Yeah, and he was he was like our last principal of the day, <laughs> and right, and so you know you're you're so nervous because you're like everything's gone so well, but <laughs> the only thing that like we really like it, yeah. it, it has to has to has to go well is Lynn. Yeah, and wow. you know I was so lucky because at that point I knew him a little bit from we had like worked out at the same gym together, and he knew Ryan, and you know had always been such a supporter of Ryan's, and so the fact that there was some sort of common ground with each other was really valuable for me but he's also just one like the coolest person on the planet and just like a walking musical theater history machine and yeah. a walking hip-hop machine so he literally he came in to the studio and I think we had about 10 minutes with him he just like got up on the platform that we were shooting on and kind of freestyled like this kind of impromptu history of hip-hop like going through like all of just like literally like singing parts of Hamilton into parts of classic hip hop songs, like all of this weaving in and out just from the top of his brain. And I was just frantically just like <laughs> shooting as many photos as I could. You know, it was, it was wild. The $10, found a father without a father, got a lot farther by working a lot harder, by being a lot smarter, by being a self-starter, daughter. Yeah. Cool experience, yeah, th that, would be very stressful for me if I was shooting all day and Lynn was the last thing I had to shoot. Yeah. Do you find in, in a situation like that where, where there's so much wrapped up in it and it's like so intensely focused um, that you have to refine the art in it? Like if it's really tech, if everything is technical, 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 and then you have to remember at the last minute, wait, I need to frame these shots artistically. Is that something that goes through your head? For me, I think the guiding principle always is motion like it's always about finding motion in a still photograph so as if as long as i'm focused on tapping into my subject energetically i find that like the rest of it can kind of go on autopilot in a good way where it's like the muscle memory and the kind of trust of my skills can come into play as long as i make sure that i'm like as tapped into what they're giving as possible so for for that day it was just you know because we were doing so much movement and it was so many, so many of the dancers and we shot every person in the cast. So we went through all the ensemble, all the principals, everybody. And there was so much movement all day that just, I always liken it to like waiting for the, you know, the, like the gun at the start of a race to when you signaled to go, it's like, I always feel like every single shot is like that kind of anticipatory energy pulsing through my body. So it's, simultaneously the most invigorating like high that you can ever get because you're kind of just always on this energized you know like loop of energy mm -hmm. and that's also the most draining thing like I always talk to other photographers that at the end of the day when I'm done with a shoot like that I am spent I am like yeah. collapsed and 
you know, just need like a bourbon and a burger and <laughs> just to sit down and kind of decompress because it all goes by so quickly, you know, yeah. even though it's eight hours or 10 hours, sometimes it goes, it goes by so lightning fast. And especially for me, I'm the kind of photographer that it's hard for me to stop and start as I'm shooting. And so I tend to like, once I start, I want to just kind of keep going. So mm -hmm. my amazing team is always there to like, give me water and help remind me yeah. to breathe and like yeah. take a second to <laughs> just like something. look around and be, yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I just want to follow up because that's how, that's what I was thinking. It, it makes sense to get everything else out of the way. And then ha if you're in, in simpatico with who you're shooting that, it, things can happen organically. And you're so yeah. good at shooting movement. Like you have yeah. so many oh. photos that are like beautiful dancers. Like I love how you celebrate Broadway dancers so much and just dancers in general and seeing the motions you capture. But I imagine Thanks. you're right. It's gotta just be like, I gotta just and yeah, but you have the time. Sorry, real quick. How do you have the time yeah. to go back and look at all the things that you shot? Like after you put them all on your hard drives, <laughs> is that something that you do or does somebody else take it? So it depends on, it depends on the job. So with something like Hamilton, you know, we're backing up to like multiple hard drives as we're shooting. We're making sure that we've got redundant files everywhere just to have everything covered. And as soon as a shoot on a, an ad campaign is done, 99% of the time I give a hard drive of like every raw file directly to the ad agency. And I'm kind of at that point hands off. So yeah. I then go back to my own apartment and Ryan has to sit there and watch me just like comb through files and just be excited about what we captured. But yeah. most of the time, like, you know, ha with all this Hamilton stuff, even the stuff that you guys are, that you have, like, I've never seen the, the sheet music book. Like I've never seen yeah. some of these, the, you know, I've never seen some of this stuff because it goes so out of my hands. Right. You know, it goes out of my hands at that point. So a lot of times I don't see the final product until like it's out in the world. And I've, as I've gotten further in my career, I've definitely been more involved and kind of more vocal about wanting to be involved at every step of the way. But early on, especially, it was like, I'd sometimes turn a corner and be like, oh, there's a bus with pictures that I didn't even know was, <laughs> a, I didn't even know those were out in the world. Cool. Yeah. Like, wow. You know, yeah, like I, I, wild. I pressed the button and now it's on a bus like going by and I yeah. forgot about it until now. Like, Crazy. Well, you, yeah, you, and you kind of just always, the good thing is like the, the ad agencies that I work with and the art directors that I work with are so incredible. And so we've all mainly worked together at this point multiple times. And there's a trust there that I know that when, you know, one of the companies takes it, I know that they're going to take such good care of the image that I have complete trust that it'll be a fun surprise rather than a bad surprise. You yeah, know? there you go. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you because not only are you um, a photographer of musical theater, but you have been involved in the creation of a musical theater piece, yeah. which is 35 millimeter, a musical yeah. exhibition, <laughs> um, which you, you and your husband, Ryan Scott Oliver, put it together. He wrote it and uh, it's specifically, we, we did the LA premiere out here. And um, one of the things uh, they send you is, you know, you have to display Matthew Murphy's photographs for yeah. each of these songs. Like you, you, and it's like, you could do it in the lobby. You could do it in a program, you yeah. can project, like you can go as big or as small as you want, but they gotta be there. How did that all come about? You know, I, the thing I love so much about 35 millimeter is that because of the way that it was born, it's, I still get to be such a fan, like a fan of it because I, I had, taken most of the photos before Ryan started writing the songs. And so we've been together now for 11 years. And when we first got together, I remember like he started writing songs based on some of my photos and he would present them to me. And I'd be like simultaneously, like so blown away. Also kind of like what's happening. There's a cool composer that's like <laughs> writing music about my songs. You know, I had never, like, how is this happening? And so for me, the fact that I got to do a lot of it before Ryan did his part allows me to kind of have this like real, just like fanboy, you know, mentality about it. Cause I just think his work on it is so incredible. And like, it's some of my favorite music he's ever written. And the oh, fact so that good. the, yeah, the fact that like I had anything to do with inspiring him to do that is such a, you know, like beyond my wildest dreams kind of form of flattery. And so, yeah, for us, it's just been incredible to see like, even now, I think, I mean, at this point, I think 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter came out like almost nine years, nine or 10 years ago, I think. Yeah. It's like 2012. It was 2012. So yeah, yeah like eight, so eight or nine years ago. Yeah. And it's wild that like, we still get tagged and, you know, like see things pop up on Twitter or Instagram of people in 
random countries that are like just discovered 35 millimeter or you know like created this incredible music video based on Sarah Barry or oh, yeah, you know, they'll do that. all of these kind of like uh amazing fan made pieces of art and so to get to know that it has a life like that and to know that we created something like that so early on in our relationship is is just really cool to look back on Oh, and that I original cast that. album is yeah. nuts. Like, oh, that cast album is insane. Like, every know, single person in that, all crazy. of those cast members yeah. went on to be, like, huge Broadway stars it's and Tony crazy. Award crazy, yeah. Um, and I love that you can do that show anywhere. And it's yeah. really the flexibility of it, which I think, you know, you being a th musical theater junkie and Ryan growing up, as he did doing theater out right. here with me. Um, he, he understands the yeah. value of uh, creating a piece that can be done by anyone across exactly. the country, by kids, by adults, professionals, high schoolers, yeah. college kids. Yeah, and like we've gotten to go, we saw it in London at the other palace yes. and they did this incredible production. And then we've seen college productions that were like totally out there, weird off the wall interpretations that were incredible. You know, it's yeah. like you can, you can really do so much with it and it's yeah. totally open to interpretation. And you know, I think some of the some of the work that I look back on from when we were younger that was so uh, kind of imprinted so incredibly on our brains are those song cycles from when we were younger. And yeah. so I feel like the fact that we created one that has some sort of impact on, you know, a younger generation of musical theater artists is just like a spectacular like moment in my life. It's so awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. a fan too. I'm a, obviously a fan of the show. And I, honestly, when, when I did it, when we did it out here, I just had never heard of that concept before. It was such a cool idea. What, song cycle? No, no, the concept of taking photographs, oh, yeah. specific yeah. photograph and like writing a song. Yeah. So not, not having pre-existed, you know? That's a really organic, cool thing too. And just a brilliant, yeah. just a brilliant synthesis. You two guys are awesome. So- uh, Well, it'll be interesting to see if we end up doing, you know, we've talked, we've floated the idea of like, will we do something like that again? Would it be interesting to kind of re-explore that? And I definitely yeah. think it's something that we're both excited about. I haven't done my own personal work in so long. And so, so much of that was my personal work when I was first really picking up a camera and figuring out what I was doing. So I'd love to kind of be given another chance to kind of do it as like a 35 millimeter 2.0 with my new, you know, with some of the new skills that I've developed over the years. And maybe that'll happen. Maybe yeah. this is the first of yeah. yeah. Hey, you have nothing but time now, we, we I get, suppose. Yeah. Like, Wait, like, the series can just be the different film sizes, you know, like yeah. the first. What exactly. Would be next? Yeah. Oh my god. 18 that'd be amazing. Millimeter, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so one of my favorite things whenever uh, we get together is for for you to give us um, some dish about shoots Ooh. you've done. Now you do not have to name names, but I want to. I want some dramatic, uh, juicy stories right now. You don't have to okay. unless you unless you really want to. <laughs> you know the one the one that I feel kind of confident that I can talk about a little, <laughs> just because it is now public knowledge to a certain extent. Was I had the opportunity to photograph Faye Dunaway about. Uh, a year ago at this point and it, it ended up being kind of one of the most infamous shoots I've ever done because this kind of dramatic juicy tidbit about it got picked up by page six and so I had done this shoot and again this was one where I like you know we've all heard stories we all know you know the, the legend that is yeah and so you know whenever you're working with a celebrity, you hear different things and you want to come in as prepared and do your research and talk to people who have worked with them. So I definitely knew what I was getting into. I knew it was going to be, you know, she's an old school Hollywood star. Like she comes mm -hmm. from a different era where it is just like, it's just a different ball game at that, you know, from where she's from and she's a legend. And so you want to treat her like a legend. And it was just this kind of perfect storm of, of wild energy on set. And it was, you know, basically like, and what should have been like a three hour photo shoot from top to bottom was like a 10 hour day of trying to figure out hair and makeup and some yelling and some, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of kind of tense moments. The thing that I will say is that she was unbelievably kind to me. <laughs> so I will say that. Yeah, she, she was knew. Incredibly, she was incredibly kind to me and always very complimentary about the lighting and you know, very, very complimentary about the things that I would hope she would be happy with. The other parts of the shoot were not quite as successful. And so there were, there were all of these, you know, there was a, a blind item in page six where basically it was about her throwing a salad 
uh, at a photo shoot. And I have never received more text messages in my life than after that blind item ran. And I had every friend of mine was like, wait, was this your photo shoot? Was this your photo shoot? And I was like, no comment. <laughs> well, I'm pretty yeah, sure, like, I'm pretty sure yeah. we had breakfast with you the next day. Right? You totally you did. Know? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told yeah. us that oh my God, And the right. next show didn't end up happening, right? It got canceled because it, it you yeah. smacked someone. That's what I heard, yeah. <laughs> no wire hangers ever! So that was, you know, there's there's those types of celebrity stories. There, you know, there's also kind of amazing celebrity stories where, like, I shot, uh, Daniel Craig was doing uh, Macbeth at New York Theater Workshop. And I was so nervous because he's James Bond, you know, he's Daniel Craig, it's all these things. And he's married he to was, Rachel Weisz. Ex exactly. And so he came i remember being really nervous that day we had a we had a we had to set up for the shoot and we didn't have very much time i think we were maybe gonna have 15 minutes with him and he was running really late because i think he was dropping their kids off at school and so he was he came in and he was so apologetic and just like really really nice right off the bat and just kind of like i'm so sorry i'm late let's do this like you know the, the type of celebrity that knows exactly how they want to get photographed they're going to deliver right away they're super professional, but they also don't want to waste a lot of time. So he's kind of like, let's just do this. So he was, because he was running late, he hadn't eaten breakfast. And he, while we were doing the shoot, was eating his breakfast and literally would be like chewing on a granola bar, take like a couple bites and then give like full like smolder face as like mid bite, like looking <laughs> unbelievable and ready for the photo, but like as he was eating. And it was but he the had most- granola in his mouth. Well, and he was, it was the most incredible thing to witness because he was simultaneously, it was like in other hands, it would have seemed unprofessional, but he was so nice and so apologetic about the whole thing that he was just kind of like, I'm sorry, I need to eat this, but like, let's do this. I can do it. We'll make it all happen at once. And I was so skeptical, but then blown away by the fact that he literally could be like mid breakfast and just giving like the shots on my website, it's of him. And he's just giving, he looks, like Daniel Craig, like stud, yeah. you know, superstar. Oh I, I, yeah. I, didn't even, I haven't really thought about it, but he's kind of king of the smolder face. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. And he's, he's so striking. You know, in yeah. person, I remember just like looking at like his blue eyes and you're like, what the heck? You are <laughs> like a very handsome dude. The <laughs> other, the other one now that my brain is like unlocked now, I'm thinking through all of these different things. Another one that, another one that I found really incredible. And this was actually tapping back to us talking about like people that we had grown up idolizing and me being really nervous when uh, Jennifer Holiday was coming into the color purple, we found out that we were going to shoot her for her poster images for Color Purple. And I, you know, grew up obsessed with her and I've watched that Jennifer clip of Holiday her, I'm telling face, you. you know. Yeah, no. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've watched that clip of her on the Tonys, you know, a hundred oh, times. And when she showed up at the studio, she was so quiet and so, you know, you think of her as being this kind of like, I'm stomping through the ground, like I'm this, you know, I'm gonna bulldoze through and I'm yeah. telling Effie, you. Effie, we and, all got pain. Yeah, and you, you expect that. And she came in and she was so quiet and so sweet. But I was, I was like, who is this person in front of me? She's very, she's much, you know, softer and sweeter than I was anticipating. And it was incredible to witness that basically, you know, we started shooting her and we were kind of all getting warmed up. And then she asked us to put on the cast recording of Color Purple so that she could sing along to it. And so I'm standing, you know, two feet away from Jennifer Holiday, And she'd been giving us wonderful shots at that point, like looking gorgeous, all of that. But when she started singing, it was like this, like channel of energy opened up in her and she just became Jennifer Holiday, And it was the most fantastic thing to witness about just the power of music and what it does for somebody in terms of their confidence and their ability to just own the space and it was like you know she was giving me her like incredible vibrato and just like you know I literally was like you know right feet there, away from her holiday. just losing my mind being like what is happening what is happening Jennifer Holiday is singing in my face yeah and sounding the same as she always has like her yeah. voice is still spectacular yeah, that one definitely stands out in my head as this kind of pinch me moment. Oh my god. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's definitely other ones that I have to plead the fifth on, though. That's fine. That's totally fine. Totally yeah. fine. Totally yeah. fine. That was plenty juicy. Um, <laughs> do you want to just like rattle off some of the Broadway shows that you've taken shots for? You know, one of my one of my f favorite shows that I've worked on recently that uh, that I just I feel really proud of kind of all of the work that we did on it is Moulin Rouge, which I've been so blown away uh, blown away by as a show and. Another person who's been so incredible to me during my career is Alex Timbers. And anytime I get to work on a show with him, the fact that I, he has this kind of trust in me and I have this, this trust that I can kind of play around with what I'm delivering to him that he really encourages. And so for me, Moulin Rouge is like the show that, you know, with, with the shutdown of Broadway right now, it's hard for me to think about all of these shows that we've all worked really hard on not being around for the moment. And I'm so yeah. excited for when that comes back, but right. also... I just was really excited about the imagery that we created for it because we grew up watching that movie. You know, we all have all these ideas of what we want it to be. And if, you know, when I was in high school watching that movie at North Carolina School of the Arts, like if you had told me that I got to work on the Broadway version of that, I would never have believed you. And mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's such a sensory overload of a show in the best possible way. And so yeah. it's been such a, a workout for me as a photographer to like push myself as hard as I can. Um, because there's so much to capture and there's so much that I want to capture in a very specific way. Yeah. So I really, I loved working Tveit's on that. that. Your buddy, yeah. your boy. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Aaron Tveit joined oh our tour. Like he, Jeff he, he dropped the out tour of college of to, to the join our tour. Yeah. Yeah. Great kid. I love him. Well, he's not oh, a yeah, kid He's anymore, amazing. Obviously. He's a bona fide uh, star. But no, I was really happy with the imagery. Like you mentioned, uh, Moulin Rouge obviously is pretty incredible source material. And it's kind yeah. of one of those moments where like all everything has to line up. You got to nail the design, the artistic design, the line yeah. thoughts, all that stuff. But most important, very important for people, particularly not in New York, who get to go see the shows. The people everywhere else, they need your pictures to see the show. So you're telling the story. It's it's yeah. really kind of it's an art form within an art form, sort of. And it gets it gets me excited to see shots like that, especially because I was I've been out of town for a while, and I didn't I'm not a, I wasn't around when Moulin Rouge was. You mean out of anything. New York? Out of New York. Um, but <laughs> yeah. so, so do you find, like you mentioned sort of working with different directors, mm -hmm. is there kind of a comfort level that comes, obviously when you know people, you know their style, it's kind of like putting on a nice, you know, a pair of shoes that fits yeah. perfectly kind of thing? There's just, there's there's something that I, I didn't know, you know, when I first started that I would get to a point where I was lucky enough to shoot as many shows as I've gotten to shoot. And so the fact that I now... I'm able to walk into a theater and it's like, oh my God, I get to see these lighting designers and costume designers and wig designers and all these people that I've gotten to travel the world with and, and kind of really create these friendships with that you then also have a shorthand with in terms of like, you know, using Alex Timbers as, as an example, he knows that he can say to me, like, I'm looking for this kind of idea behind the shot, but within mm -hmm. what I'm saying, like do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And that kind of freedom is is really exciting as a photographer because you want some sort of direction you know you want some sort of idea of what they're looking for so you make sure that you deliver it but to know that there's faith that the product will be in line with what their vision is is exciting and just you know i'm so spoiled to get to work with all of the the creative team of all of these shows because the thing that i i feel like doesn't get enough say that i really feel like is so important is that anytime you see a photo of mine it is the work of like hundreds of people yeah so you know the fact that the fact that i get credit for you know the moulin rouge image or you know that people see that and they're like oh my god matt that's such a great photo it is literally like hundreds of people who have gone into making that image look as good as it does you know so yeah. i would i'm fortunate there there but it's it's so much is given to them. We were just talking to Liam about the the swinging lights in Hades Town. Yeah, and how obsessed I was with that imagery specifically. And oh, he yeah. told us that Rachel Chavkin had that idea the minute she first heard the song on the concept record. Yeah, she always had the images of that, and and so they had like two at the at the off Broadway space, and then as the cast got bigger and the sets were bigger, they got now they have five, four or five, I think five. Yeah, that was one of those moments. I remember shooting the dress rehearsal of that. And I think I was I was lucky with Hades Sound because I got to shoot a couple of times. So I think that I shot the dress rehearsal like two or three times that they were running it. And then uh, I got to create these portraits for them in the alleyway during that time, which was really cool. But I remember at the end of Wait For Me, the first time I saw it in the theater, 
I literally like put my cameras down and just turned around to Rachel Chopkin and was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like, I swear, but like, I was just like, I was like, are you serious? Like that was unreal. Like I, I and it, it. you know, it, it was almost, it was almost like too good where it was distracting me from shooting where I was like, wait, like take photos, take photos. You know, come on, you gotta, <laughs> like, like, you gotta, you gotta stay kind focused. Of watching this. A little bit, because yeah. when they started moving and like the the movement of the set and all of the like the sound design and everything yeah. that goes into that moment is so special. And that is actually that's a moment that I will say is almost impossible to capture in a photo in the way that it feels in the theater. And I think oh. that's always what I'm trying to do as a photographer is try to make the photo feel like the show feels rather than just be like a literal representation of how it looks. But that's a moment that is almost like so next level in the terms of the feeling inside of you when you're watching it that it's like nearly impossible to replicate in a still photo. But I still oh. tried. Hades Town, that cast had been together for a while, particularly, well, a lot of the principals had. So that was kind of a well oiled machine by the time you started to shoot it. But there's, yeah. there's got to be shows that are stopping and starting. You know, even the one that we oh, saw. Oh, yeah. The, the Cursed Child, Cursed they Child were on their second stop. cast, and they had to stop and start a couple times. Yeah. But yeah. Only early. It happens. It smooth, but I bet, I bet, I'm yeah. just curious at how often it happens. You know, it, it does happen a fair amount. And in some ways, it's, a, it's kind of a fine line. I actually like sometimes when they have to stop and go back because it gives me a second chance at a number. And so mm-hmm. if it's my first time shooting it, even though it's frustrating to kind of everybody else in the theater that they had to stop, to me, it's actually usually a blessing <laughs> that like, that they have to go back and do it again. And so I can be a little bit more on my toes knowing what's coming. But then there are the times where like, you know, I, I remember I was in, uh, I went out to, to shoot a tech of a show one time and they were running so far behind that like we were, we basically got through, you know, maybe like a third of the show that night in the dress rehearsal that was supposed wow. to happen. Yeah. The one, oh my God, the wildest one that I remember was that during, uh, during Rocky, the musical, which I was obsessed with shooting. It was one of my favorite things to Those shoot because it was so amazing. cool. Oh I mean, God. it's another Alex Timbers moment where it was just like, for me, it was really early on in my career and it felt like this exciting moment to kind of prove myself again. And I just remember there was some huge snowstorm in New York at that point. And the salt from the from the street had like corroded some power line or something. And the only theater that was affected was the Winter Garden. And that was where they were teching. And this show was such a massive, massive, massive undertaking technically that they were on like, they were doing like a dry tech as a dress rehearsal at that point, essentially where they were like physically moving the sets. And it was like, we were, it was going so slow that I just know for the actors, they were losing their minds. But for me, it was just this like, feast of getting these multiple (laughs) opportunities to shoot the show the scenes over and over um yeah but it can be you know it kind of you want to find the balance of like not stopping too many times Mm -hmm. not only have you shot um broadway shows and new york theater but you've been lucky to really like you said travel the whole world uh shooting stuff i mean you've shot shows that i've been in out in la but i mean you've gone to what like australia you've gone to london you've gone all over the place shooting tours yeah yeah, you know, I think when I first started, so one of my, one of the first things that I got uh, connected to early on in my career was I, I got brought on to be the photographer for a lot of Cameron McIntosh's shows. Yes. And, you know, when that first happened, the first one that I got brought on for was the, the uh, what was it? it was, the first one I got brought on for was the launch of the Les Mis production that ended up coming to Broadway, and that was in Toronto. And that was the first time that I got to leave the country to work like that. And I remember that time going, you know, like, okay, my ultimate dream, new goal is like, if somehow I can get taken over to London or somewhere overseas to travel to photograph a show, that would be like, ultimate dream come true that I never even could have, you know, imagined. And Cameron has been like, so unbelievable to me in terms of the opportunities that he's given me since that happened, where, you know, a lot of the times I've gotten to leave the country were definitely either directly because of him in terms of he was bringing me to, you know, I went to Stockholm to shoot Phantom of the Opera and I got to go to, I uh, you know, I've, I've, I've traveled to a, to a bunch of different cities for Cameron McIntosh shows. And so that led me to all of these different connections with other producers, you know, and other, other general managers and all of these people in these different countries that then would also give me opportunities that 
sometimes I'm like, how, how did I fool them into letting me come to Australia to shoot a show? But I will gladly do it because I love Australia. And, yes. ah. you know, I Aussie just, rules, Aussie rules I know it's just the best. And so, yeah, getting to travel, it's, it's been really, really, really like incredible. And I've gotten to spend a substantial amount of time in London, I would say is probably where I've been the most frequently for shows. But then I've gotten, I've got, yeah, I've gotten to go to Australia, I think three or four times for shows over the past couple of years. And wow. that is, you know, another moment of going like, I, I had this moment when the pandemic hit where I was kind of like, you know what, I feel so unbelievably grateful for every single opportunity that I've been given. And who knows what will happen after this? None of us do, you know, we're doing our best, but I just can't help but look back over the past decade and just feel so grateful, you know, to yeah. have gotten these opportunities. I was going to ask a, another question about Joan Marcus because I, yeah. I did a couple of shows that she came to shoot. They were both on the road. One was in Vegas and one was in Minneapolis. What she shows? Came, yeah. Uh, Gre Greece and Vegas and Minneapolis was 101 Dalmatians. She might have Amazing. shot uh, South Pacific that I did, but I'm not sure. I just remember because uh, I never got to meet her. But the yeah. people were like, oh, my God, you guys, Joan Marcus is here. It's like, yeah. So I started hearing this name and I, I wasn't really a theater kid. I kind of learned throughout my career in the early 2000s and up. But as soon as as soon as it became clear that, oh, Joan Marcus, oh, my God, she shoots everything. And yeah. So when you first got to meet Joan Marcus and start uh, actually working with her and becoming friends with her, it must have been an incredible sort of mentorship feel. Was she open to that right away and, and just really dug you like just off the bat? Yeah, you know, Joan, Joan has been one of the most giving, generous people I've ever known, like from the minute we met. And it was actually incredible because we were, you know, both working for a while before we actually got to meet. And I remember she, we were friends online. She had put Ryan's name up for a job to a friend of hers. Like she was so supportive of me and of Ryan from the get go without having ever even met us. Mm -hmm. And I remember we actually met, I think for the first time at the Hamilton opening night party. And I remember we literally like we spotted each other across the room and it was like this slow motion, like, <laughs> Oh my God, finally we're getting to say hi. Uh... And you know, now, now I feel like, the thing that is crazy about the Broadway photography world is that there are so few of us, you know, there's, there's a, a decent amount of photographers in the Broadway community, but in the scheme of things, it's still a really small world. And so, especially with production photography, it's even smaller where there's really just a handful of us that do it. And getting to have someone who has literally shot like thousands of shows who has, she tells stories about, you know, you sit with her and she's like, I was there the, the night that Jonathan Larson passed away. Like, you know, she has been around through all of these incredible musical theater history moments that she can tell you about firsthand and getting to not only hear from her about her history, but to talk with her about the ups and downs of the industry and what it's like to be a photographer in the Broadway world and what the struggles are. Just having someone who understands it to such a degree that she does mm. is, you know, a real, real uh, thing to cherish for me. And we actually got the chance, uh, when was it? It was maybe, it was like two years ago now, King Kong opened on Broadway yes. and they reached out to both of us and they said, you know, this is a massive show. It is, we, th we think it's too big for one photographer to do. And they said, you know, would you and Joan do it together? And I, I can't speak for her, but I know I was beyond flattered to even be like considered in the same breath. And so we, I just remember sitting with her before we went in and shot King Kong and we like went to Starbucks and we're just kind of hanging out and talking about what we thought the shoot would be like and how we wanted to approach it. And getting to like do si -do in the theater with Joan Marcus during that yeah. shoot was so like, it was just so cool. You know, she's, her image, her images are iconic and she is iconic and she's a like Tony award winning Titan of the industry. So yeah, I, I just, I love, 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 love her. And I can't wait to see her again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That's so great. Well, yeah, yeah. And so how many times have you shot at the same time as her? Cause that's in Hades town and King Kong. That's two. Yeah. Well, so we, we didn't end up shooting Hades town together, but we were both there, but we oh, did see. King Kong together. And then we, I don't think we've actually ended up shooting another show at the same time, but we, you know, whenever we get the chance to be in the same room together, I know that we try to jump at it. And, you know, she, we have both been busy with traveling independently a lot for shows. So sometimes our time in the city is not overlapping as much as 
I would like it to be. But in a weird way, quarantine has been nice. We've ended up catching up on the phone, you know, pretty frequently and getting to touch base and, and hear how she's doing. So I'm hopeful that we'll get to shoot another show together at some point. I mean, that was super fun. Once yeah. theater is back, you, yeah. <laughs> you just have this yeah. prolonged vacation now, I guess. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, it went from, you know, I I was like looking at my calendar, you know, on March 12th, I was booked for a minute and had like a couple of exciting shows to look forward to. And then all of a sudden, as for all of us, it just kind of all changed really overnight. And so I am definitely, I know that it's going to come back. I can't wait for it to come back. I am probably going to be a hysterical mess at that first shoot that I, sh- like, you know, the first yeah. shoot that I do. I can't even, yeah, I can't imagine what cards. that would be like. My SD cards. Oh, oh no. God. Well, <laughs> not only will I, will I have to like really remember what I'm doing, but just, I feel like already I get so kind of emotional sometimes when I'm shooting shows, like when you hear the orchestra start for the sure. first time and you really take in the moment, it's so spectacular. And so I feel like with the time off that we've had, when that happens next, I'm just going to be like, oh my God, Broadway. (laughs) Well, you took some amazing, really kind of haunting photos of, you know, I guess it was a month or two into the pandemic of Times Square and how empty and dead it was. Yeah. I just knew, you know, I think that was about a month in, it's like in the middle of April And I just knew that for myself, I needed to go and just see what it was just so that I could document it so that I had, you know, I I wanted to document it so that we all could kind of see what it was. But just for my own emotional journey through all of this, I was like, I kind of need to go and see what's up. And it was so eerie. You know, we're all used to Times Square bustling like crazy. And this, I went right around 8 p.m. So it should have been, you know, every show loading in, every show getting ready to start. And it was just silent and like desolate. And so I think that since then, you know, we've been out of the, we've been out of New York for a minute, but I think since then things are at least a little bit more energized in the city, it seems because we've reopened a little bit, but uh, I, I just can't wait to, you know, I, I will, ne- I've never craved shoving my way through a Times Square crowd like I do right now. You know, like who knew that I'd ever like, get to a point I where I was like- I would kill for one of those dirty Elmos right? to come up to me or- You, you mean- Like Times I'll Square do it even with people with umbrellas. Like with, I'll do it oh. if they have an umbrella. I'll be like, sure, let's yeah, run Yeah, all the together. tourists yeah. looking up while Times you're trying yeah. to- Times Square that we would bypass every time- Every time, possible, yeah. You know? But now, yeah, it would be cool to go back to those days. Yeah, and we will, I know we will, but it's crazy. Oh. Okay, so now we are coming to our fun uh, questions right here. Our Stealing Focus 5. Yes! Okay. Yay! Okay, so Matt, question number one. Yeah. What, what is your favorite musical? That's such a hard question. I, I feel know. like the one, the one that, if I'm being my truest self, really pops to my head as something that was so formative for me in terms of like, not only my career as a photographer, but my kind of initial like moving to the city passion for Broadway is Hairspray. I love Hairspray so much. And I, you know, I grew up as this like huge Sondheim kid with all the Into the Woods and Sunday in the Park with George and Sweeney Todd and all of that and devouring that. But I, I just think there is something so spectacular about the construction of Hairspray. And I saw it during previews when I was younger and the fact that it was kind of my gateway into being a Broadway photographer is just the kind of like perfect trajectory in my head for it being the show that really means the world to me. That's a great answer. You yeah. can't stop the beat, Matt. You can't stop the beat. You can't. Okay, <laughs> so question number two. What is your dream project or dream role or something, you know, something mm-hmm. in those lines? Yeah, I think a dream project for me is that I really want to start working on my own personal portrait project with Broadway actors, because I think especially coming back from quarantine, I think there's going to be something kind of wonderfully like weathered about all of us that we weren't anticipating. And I want to kind of in the same way that I documented the Times Square, you know, images, I want to document this time in theater history, even though I know it's not necessarily the most beautiful or easiest thing to think about or or witness, I still think it's really important that we all do remember it and do kind of take stock of it as it is carrying on. And so when I get back to the city, I think I really want to just get back in the in the studio and just make some portraits with some actors and see where they're at right now. I love that. That's a great answer. Yeah. Number three, which yeah. project are you most proud of? I feel like we talked about it a, a lot. I feel like we talked about a couple of these, but for me, 
the, the Moulin Rouge imagery has been really exciting because I feel like it really encapsulates everything that I'm about in terms of movement and energy as a photographer. And then, you know, I, I will never not be proud of the Hamilton images and getting to see it, getting to see how Disney Plus used the Hamilton images and all yeah. of them kind of re revamped them to be the photo versions of themselves mm -hmm. has been something that I didn't ever anticipate when we were shooting it, that all of a sudden they would be seen as photos at some point. So seeing them out there in the world like that and with the Disney logo on it, I was like, what's happening? This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I was, I was very proud of the editing that they, that they pulled off for that. Oh my God. Beautifully shot. Oh, nothing, it's incredible. Nothing was missed in that version. No. Spectacular achievement. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Okay. Question four. This is the best one. What musical hurts your soul? <laughs> I, this one is the one I feel like I have to plead the fifth on a little bit, <laughs> but I will, I That's will fine. say it's so, it is so, so, so rare that I shoot a show where I'm like, can't find something valuable in it, yeah. but there, there have been a couple where I've just gone like, oh, did you really need to adapt that movie? Or like, oh, did you really need to adapt it that way? Like, are yeah. we sure this was right? So I'm going to plead the fifth on the title, but it, it is one that was adapted from a movie that was a tour. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Yeah. Think about it, people. Okay. And um, <laughs> I might have been in that show. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. You might have. No. All right. <laughs> so, okay. Number five. Who is your musical theater hero? Avatar or Muse. I'm, it, you're gonna literally vomit on the computer, but I'm gonna say Ryan Scott Oliver right now because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I will say, I will say because the thing that has been really cool about quarantine right now is because I'm not doing anything. Literally, the thing that blows my mind about him is he's such a kind of creative genius in that how he works. I, getting to to be witness to how he works is just fascinating like i'm downstairs literally binging babysitters club on netflix and he's upstairs <laughs> like creating some new masterpiece you know and so getting to hear that upstairs while i'm just living my like you know indulgent binge dreams downstairs i'm always kind of like wow wow you're really really good um and then you know other than Ryan, I would say my, I am such a like forever Bernadette Peters stan that I feel like I, I couldn't, I can't not mention her. You stan she's a just, queen. Like, yeah, she's yeah, alleged. you can't, you know, you can't not. No. So, okay. Bernadette, Good. yeah. Great. <laughs> oh man, it's been so great talking with you, Matt. You're, yeah. You're one of my, you're one yeah. of my favorite storytellers. Uh, I've oh, mentioned thanks, guys. We've had, I've had some. You told some stories where I, I just can't believe where it's going, and it gets even better as you go. You're a great <laughs> oh. storyteller. So thank you oh, for thank talking you. to us and for thanks giving for your having advice. me. I mean, yeah. we miss you. I miss you guys. We'll hopefully be able to all travel and see each other soon. Yeah. Yes, one of these days. Yeah, and, and it'll have happen. Fun taking, have fun taking all your photographs in your undisclosed outside of New York location. So yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Okay, okay. And okay. that's why Waterworld is still here. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Take that chandelier from Fanta. Stealing focus.